Welcome to episode 11 from chapter 13, and in this episode we're going to cover passive transport, which is mainly about osmosis and diffusion. This has probably got a good chance of being our longest episode from this series because we've got a number of vocabulary to cover in this one. So I want you to take your time. If you need to pause and write some extra information down, don't hesitate to do that. Um, if I'm going to write on the screen, make sure you do the same thing, as always. And without further ado, let's get down to business. All right, so... Passive transport is basically the movement of molecules in and out of the cell without using any kind of energy. So it kind of happens naturally. The cell doesn't have to work at it. So how does this happen? I really want you to pay attention to stuff right here. Okay. They're going to move from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration, and that is called gradient. The word gradient simply means hill. So basically how I demonstrate this is just draw a triangle. And at the top we have high concentration. Now to write concentration we use brackets. And this is stolen from the world of chemistry. And so down here at the bottom we have low concentration. So naturally things are going to go downhill. So they're eventually going to move from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration until they actually equal out. And when they equal out, that is called equilibrium. And equilibrium is spelled like this. And what equilibrium means is instead of having a triangle, we've got a rectangle where things can go back this way and they can go this way. So all the concentrations are equal. So we can think of this as same concentration. Okay, so we're going to go from area of high to an area of low until everything is equal. And that's passive transport. It doesn't take any energy like that. Now, passive transport comes in three flavors. Number one is called diffusion. Diffusion is the movement of any molecule down the concentration gradient. We've all have experienced this. This is, for example, like maybe... You're, you're in the living room or family room and you're, you're watching Spongebob on TV and all of a sudden you go, yeah, we're going to have pizza for supper. Is there a pizza right in front of you? No. There's a pizza in the kitchen. So in the kitchen you've got a high concentration of pizza molecules where you're sitting at in front of the TV, low concentration of pizza molecules. The molecules are going to move from the kitchen to the low area, which is the living room, and finally they're going to balance out and the whole house is going to smell like uh, pizza. Osmosis is simply the diffusion of water. We're going to go over that one in a lot of detail. That's the number one reason why this is going to be a long episode. Facilitated diffusion, the word facilitate means to help. So this is going to be diffusion with a little of extra help. And we have some proteins called carrier proteins. They're going to help us move things from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. All right? All right, so let's get rid of that stuff. And let's learn about diffusion. All right, I just love this picture. Uh, this is simply just yellow food coloring put into um, some, some uh, glasses of water. And you're going to notice that up here at the top, when you drop in the food coloring, you have a high concentration. And all the food coloring is moving to the area where there's a low concentration. So once again, this is the movement of molecules from an area of high to low. So we have high concentration up here, we have low concentration down there, and psh, they go that until we get to a process where the whole thing is equal. Same concentration, molecules are moving back and forth. And remember, that is called equilibrium. Let me see if I can spell that right. There we go. Equilibrium, which simply means the same concentration. Okay, The goal is always to go from here to there. So that's diffusion. Could be perfume, yeah, cologne, body odor, you know, PU. Alright, let's get rid of that. Let's move on to the next one. Alright, osmosis. Osmosis is the diffusion of water across a biological membrane. So think of that cell membrane that we learned on the previous episode. Okay, now let's, now let's not use green, let's use red. Alright, so very important. Make sure you got this down because I 
pretty much guaranteed that's going to be a multiple choice question at some point during this chapter. All right, now selectively permeable. The stuff in parentheses is the definition of that. Only any kind of membrane, some stuff can pass through, some stuff cannot. In other words, it selects what can get through. So the word permeable means to get through. So when you put the word selectively in front of it, some stuff can get through, some stuff cannot. It's typically based on, on size. All right, so I want you to look at this movie over here. Okay, water molecules are the small little blue circles. They can get in and out of the membrane real easy. They're going to fit through those transport proteins, no problem. The sugar molecules, which are the green rings, they're too big. They can't get through. So what the, the cell is trying to do is trying to get the same amount of water inside and outside so everything's equal. So on the outside, we've got a high amount of water. I'm going to do it this way. Okay, on the outside, we got a high amount of water. On the inside, we got a low amount of water. That water is going to move in, and that's why you can see this water is moving in that way. Okay? So basically, when osmosis, things are going to move, the water is going to move from a high concentration to an area of low concentration. We're still doing this stuff, going downhill, high to low. But it's a little bit more complicated. So let's get down to the more complicated. We talk about osmosis. We're going to talk about what is called tonicity. Tonicity is a description of the solution. When you have a solution, you need to remember things like solvent and solute. The difference between these two is the solvent does the dissolving, it's typically a liquid. The solute gets dissolved, typically a solid, sol or solid, I should say. So if you're making Kool-Aid, water is the solvent, the solute would be the Kool-Aid powder and the sugar, okay? Now, when we talk about tonicity, we've got three different uh, situations, and that's why I call these the tonic words, because they all end with tonic. Tonic refers to tonicity which is a measure of the amount of solute. Okay, so let's do this. Measures solute concentration. Remember, brackets mean concentration. All right, so hypo means low. You have a low amount of solute. Now, just the opposite is, if you don't have very much solute, you have lots of solvent. Now. When you put a cell in a hypotonic solution, water is going to move in, and that cell is going to expand. Okay, make a note of that. It's going to expand. Okay, hyper, hyper means more, and we're really talking about more solute. So if you have more solute, you're going to have less of the solvent, so you have low amount of water. And when you put a cell in a hypertonic solution, it's going to shrink. Now, iso is a word that means the same. So these you have the same water concentration, and it will not change shape. So no change in shape. Isotonic basically means this. It's already in equilibrium. Remember we talked about equilibrium, things are equal, equal on both sides. Okay, now this stuff down here in red, pay attention, okay? You're going to move from a hypotonic situation towards the hypertonic situation in order to become isotonic. Okay, we're going to, so you, you're going from a high concentration of water to a low concentration of water until everything is equilibrium, or in other words, hypotonic to hypertonic in order to become isotonic. All right, if you don't understand what all these scribbles are, we have a picture that will explain a little bit better than I got. All right, so we've got an animal cell on the top. You can tell it's an animal cell by being round, and there's no cell wall. Plant cell on the bottom, you can tell it's a plant cell because it's square, and it's got a cell wall right in there. Okay, let's use the red on this one. Okay. All right, in a hypotonic solution, we have more water on the outside. So what we have is more 
H2O outside. So the water is going to move in. And this cell is going to expand. And it may expand so much to the point that where it will lice, which is a fancy word that means to break or burst. So this cell burst open. Now, in a plant cell, you want the plant cell to be in a hypotonic situation because this large central vacuole, we'll go LCV for short, that guy's going to be full, and it's going to be turgid, which means that central vacuole is going to be pushing out onto the cell wall, and that plant's going to stand up nice and stiff. Okay? So, nice, healthy cell. Okay, in an isotonic solution, you remember isotonic simply means equilibrium, where everything's the same. So in equilibrium, if you've got five water molecules moving in, you're going to have five of them moving out. So things are going to move in and out at the same rate, so that's normal. Now, in a plant cell, that's not very good. Okay? We're not having that central vacuole push out onto the cytoplasm into the cell wall. So we have what is called flaccid. Flaccid is a word that means limp. Uh, in plant terms, that could be on the way to wilting. Okay? Now, if you put it in a hypertonic, which means you have less water outside. Write that down in here. So you have more on the inside, so the water is going to move out. That cell is going to shrink. Okay, now, when we have severe shrinkage in a plant cell, that's called plasmolysis. And as you can see right in here, this stuff here, empty space. And that's really, really bad for the cell. In fact, you can see here the large central vacuole is kind of empty. So, I want you to remember, in a hypotonic solution, cell is going to expand. In an isotonic solution, it's going to stay the same. And then in a hypertonic solution, the cell is going to shrink. Okay, pretty basic stuff, but there's a lot to draw in, so make sure you got all this stuff down. All right, facilitate diffusion. Remember the word facilitate simply means to help. So facilitate means to help. So hopefully your teacher is a facilitator. That person is helping you learn. Now when we have the word diffusion, that means we're going from high to low in order to become uh, isotonic or equilibrium. So you're going down the concentration gradient until things equal out. Now, some molecules are too large to get across the membrane, but they still need to diffuse. So our helper molecule is going to be the carrier protein. That's going to be our helper. Okay? So if we look right in here, our carrier proteins, right in there. Let's draw this up there. It kind of acts like an automatic door. Okay, so as the molecule moves in, it causes the shape to change, and it pushes it in. And when it needs to go back outside, it just reverses it. So, Notice you see no ATP, so that means this requires no energy. All right? Okay, we're going to end up right there. Um, kind of a long episode. I, I tried to make it as short as I could, but you really want to review this one. You have got to know the difference between hypo, hyper, isotonic, and you need to know what effect that has on both a plant and an animal cell. So make sure to review that one. There's plenty of neat stuff that can come in this kind of, uh, and plenty of neat essay questions that come out of this section. So if you have any questions with this, see me in class or ask your own teacher if you're a person outside my class watching this on YouTube. Until next time, we'll catch you on the flip side.